some are going to be the current assets and the property plant and equipment or just equipment in this case so it equals the current assets here plus the net equipment the equipment less the uh, accumulated depreciation okay so now we're going to go to the liabilities and equity liabilities and equity so that's going to be our next kind of section here of course and then we're going to have our current assets or current liabilities i should say current liabilities and those will include starting off with accounts payable this time and we're going to have to do another calculation over here. Now this will be somewhat similar to the accounts receivable calculation where we will start off with the payable on the books. So we're going to have to go up to the balance sheet. Where did we start off with the accounts payable? 200,500, 200,500. And then we only have purchases. That's the only thing we use our payables for to purchase inventory. So we can, we can then go up to our purchases of inventory. We have the standardized purchase. We always buy all the inventory for the month and then we pay for it the following month. So we're going to go ahead and say this equals and scroll up to our purchases area up top where we purchase the materials. So we're going to scroll up to the purchases. We have the 611-474 of purchases of materials. That's the only thing we use the payable account for in this company. So uh, then we have the payments for raw materials. Then, so we have to sum up the actual payments that we made for the raw materials, which is going to reduce the the payable so we're going to go up we could find that on our cash uh disbursements so we have the cash disbursements here and we're looking for the payments for material so again we could have just taken up the total the 623.49 or we could sum up the column again it's going to add up to the 623.49 for july august and september these are what we paid off so the payable at the end is going to equal the payable at the beginning plus what we purchased on account, meaning accounts payable goes up because we got stuff and we didn't pay for it, we put it on credit, minus the part that we paid off, like the part of the kind of the credit card that we paid off, that gives us our ending payable of the 191,625. So we're just gonna say this equals, and I'm gonna scroll back over here, that number right there. Okay, so the next time we're gonna have the short term loan, payable so remember we had the small loan to get us up to that minimum balance of forty thousand we can pick that up we can pick that up uh in the cash flow we, we needed this eight thousand one sixty to bring us up to that forty thousand there so we have the loan and then we have the income taxes payable income taxes payable so we calculated the income tax and of course we haven't paid it yet at this point so whatever's on the income statement in terms of income tax is what we owe or what we will owe in the budgeted so we have the income tax here we owe that we we're going to uh, incur it and then owe it of course at that point so we have the total current liabilities is then going to be the sum of our current liabilities so we're going to equal the sum of this 191,625 down to the 23,263. We could underline this as well. We can go to the home tab. We can go to the font group. We can underline this as well. Then we have our long term. We have one long term liability, which is a long term note payable. And note that hasn't changed. We've been, we're still at the same start part where we started from. We're paying interest on it, but the principal has not gone down. We've just been paying off the interest, paying like the rent on the money still at 500,000. We're just paying off the interest. So we're going to go down here and we still got that big 500,000 loan that we owe back. So we're going to have the common stock. Now the common stock hasn't changed. So we're going to scroll back up here and say the common stock. We haven't issued any more common stock. So we're still at the 335, 335,000. And so we haven't, we haven't issued any more. And remember, if we issue common stock, that's kind of like uh, an investment if we were sole proprietor, the, the, uh, more investors putting money in. We do, however, have a change in retained earnings. So we are going to have a change in the retained earnings. I'm going to indent this here. We're going to have our last little worksheet over here to uh, calculate that difference in retained earnings. And this will be kind of like our mini statement of equity here that will show us this, this change in retained earnings. So I'm going to scroll back over here and we're going to say our beginning retained earnings. The beginning retained earnings we had was 
208788. So this is 208788. That's where we started with. And of course, retained earnings goes up by net income. And we calculated that on the budgeted income statement to be the 43204. And we also have dividends. So remember, that's the like draws. That's the amount that's that's being taken out or given to shareholders. And we, we see that that happened on the uh, cash flows, one place where we can't see it. So there was this 10,000 of dividends that were paid out. So therefore, the Indian retained earnings is going to be what we started with, plus the income that was earned, minus the dividends that were paid out. Therefore, kind of the amount, the earnings that are that still retained at this point are the 241,992. So that'll give us our total stockholders equity, and we'll calculate that over here. I don't know why I made this negative. I'm going to make that positive. I'm going to I put a negative sign in front of that. I'm going to take that away. So we're going to add those two up. We're going to say this equals the sum of the common stock and the retained earnings. So we have that. And now we have our last number, which will, of course, be the total stockholders' equity and liabilities. Liabilities and equity. So liabilities and equity. And, of course, we're hoping that after we add these up, it'll add up to the total assets, and meaning that we will be in balance. And this will this is kind of my check number here. That'll go to zero if that's the case. So I'm going to say this equals the sum of the current liabilities, the long-term liabilities, and the stockholders' equity. And hopefully when we hit enter, this number will go to zero. If we hit enter, that's going to go to, and it, oh, all right. So this number then equals this number. We are in balance. So we feel good. And that is the uh, master budget.